So in our first lecture, we talked about the kinds of questions that we are going to address in this course. So we are going to do these uh, patterns of computation and illustrate how they can be used to systematically uh, calculate certain quantities and apply these patterns across different problems. So for these, we are going to use some specific types of data to make it more understandable and concrete. So first, we will start with school marks. So this uh, is a typical report card. So it has various pieces of information on it as the name of the student, say the school, uh, it also has some information about uh, say the date of birth and various other factors to identify the student. It has a serial number for the student or a roll number. And then you have the marks in the different subjects in each subject, math, science, uh, social studies, language and so on. So there is a lot of information and this is a little bit uh, complicated to process. So what we will actually work with is a simplified form of this report cards. So this is the format in which we will look at the report card. So each report card has various pieces of information on it. It has a name, it has a gender, it has a date of birth in terms of a day and a month, a town or a city and then there are three marks, marks in maths, marks in physics, marks in chemistry and at the bottom there is a total which is the sum of these three marks. Right? And each card has a number on it to indicate it uniquely so that if we happen to have say two people with the same name or something, we won't get confused. So this is card number 9, similarly this is card number 3 and this is card number 24 and so on. So each card has exactly the same type of information but the exact details will vary. So this is for Siddharth and this is for Rida and this is a boy and this is a girl, this person was born in Madurai, this person was born in Chennai and so on. Right? So each report card has a certain amount of information on it. And what we are going to do is try and understand how to calculate various quantities about this information. So our second set of data consists of shopping bills. So if you look at a shopping bill, typically it has a date, it has a name of the shop, it might have some other information about the shop like the address, maybe the GST number and various details which are not very important for us. And of course it will have a list of items which have been bought. So it will have the name of the item, the quantity, how many of that item were bought, it will have a unit price usually, how much each item costs if you buy one of them and then it will have a total. For instance, if you buy 4 bananas and each banana costs 8 rupees, then the total will say 8 into 4, 32. And at the bottom of the bill, you will have a total for the whole bill and then you might have some extra information like how much of tax you have paid, GST and so on. So again, this tax and all this extra thing is kind of uh, extraneous and not so important for us. So we will use a simplified form of the shopping bills. So here is a typical shopping bill that we will use. So it has on the top the name of the shop, here it is SV stores. We have something which we will be using for our calculations which you normally do not find on a shopping bill, that is the name of the customer. So here it says that this bill was Srivatsan's bill. Again it has a serial number 1 to indicate that this is a separate bill and the other ones will have numbers like 2, 3, 4 and so on. And then you have the details of course, you have the items carrots, soap, tomatoes, bananas. So these are the things that the person has bought in this bill. What type of item it is, is it food or is it toiletry or is it footwear and so on. Then we have the quantity. So this person has got four soaps under the category toiletries. Each soap costs 32 rupees and the last price is, last column is the total cost. So 32 rupees into 4 is 128 rupees, right. So therefore each row now has five quantities, five items, the name of the item, the type, the quantity, the unit price and the total cost. And then if you come down at the bottom, you have a grand total for this bill. So in this way, we have several bills from different shops. So this is a shop Big Bazaar for Akshaya, this is another Big Bazaar and so on. Here is a third type of shop, Sun General. So what we will ask is questions about across shops, which shops are doing better business, which customers are more uh, bigger spenders, who is spending more on say of food, who is spending more on apparel. So these are all questions that you might want to ask and a shop might want to ask, right? Who are the customers who are shopping in all types of shops? Who are the customers who are shopping in only one type of shop? So there are many interesting questions you can ask about these bills and we will address some of them as we go along. The third data set that we will use is a collection of words taken from a paragraph. So this paragraph is from Swami and Friends by the well-known author R.K. Narayan. So here is the paragraph. 
So what we have done with that paragraph is to put each word on a separate card. So for instance, the first word in the paragraph is it. So the card says the word, it has a serial number and it has two other items. It has the type of speech. So it is a pronoun and it also has the number of letters in the word. So it has two letters. So each word is now represented in each word in the paragraph is now represented as a separate card. And of course, here now it is important that you have the sequence number because some words like it or was will appear many times in the paragraph. So we want to count each of them separately and make sure that they are separate cards. So for example, if you remember the paragraph, it started off with it was Monday morning. So these are the first four cards, right? Swaminathan was reluctant to open his eyes, right? So this is just a systematic way in which we have taken the paragraph and broken it up into single words. So we have taken the punctuation, for example, the full stop and put it along with the word so that it is not separated out. And what we can now do is ask questions about these words. For instance, how many nouns are there? How many verbs are there? Which is the longest word? How many sentences are there? In which case we have to figure out uh, how to decide when a sentence ends and so on. Okay? So this will be our third data set on which we will illustrate our computational thinking patterns.